I'm about as real as they come. All my beats tailored by Joe. Digital. Maserati Rick in Detroit, D. convertible bird in Miami, Miami graduated summa cum laude, strip club made a tsunami, Carlton Hines with the ball game, Rayful Edmonds with the snowflakes, Craig Pettis in the M-Town, Sal Magluta with the boat game, Falcone with the cocaine, like Freeway Ricky with the plug game, like Monster Cody in South Central, Larry Davis from Close Range. The year is 1979. In the city of Richmond. Very rough, very hard time. Richmond City Sheriff C.T. Woody takes us back in time to his days as a young patrol officer. Crime was on an uproar in the uh, city of Richmond, particularly homicides. Investigators say these four men, Linwood Briley, younger brothers Anthony and James Briley, along with their accomplice Duncan Meekins, are the reason for much of the bloodshed in 1979. March 12th, criminals knock on a couple's front door in Henrico County, claiming he has car trouble and needs to use their telephone. The oldest brother, Linwood, forces his way into the home. Linwood pulls out a gun on the husband and wife and tells his younger brother, Anthony, to come inside. Linwood was the leader. He was the leader. If whatever he said, that, that's actually what went, you know. The Briley brothers tie up the couple, clean the home of all valuables, and douse each room with kerosene before setting the structure on fire. Quickly driving away from the area, the men are not around when the Henrico couple escape the fire, making them the sole survivors of the Briley brothers' killing spree. Several months later, the city is on edge. The Briley brothers find their fourth homicide victim on the night of September 14th. Well-known DJ Johnny Gallagher is performing with his band at a South Richmond nightclub. Johnny G steps outside for a quick break while the Briley brothers roam the city. Linwood Briley sees and quickly assaults Gallagher and throws him into the trunk of his own Lincoln Continental. The brothers drive Gallagher out to the James River, take him out of the trunk, and shoots him at point-blank range. It takes police two days to find Gallagher's body in the river. I went through a lot of the crime scenes. Sheriff Woody says he can still remember the crime scene at this home on 4th Avenue, the murders of Charles Gardner and a blind 79-year-old woman by the name of Blanche Page. Police say they believe robbery was the motive. They found the house ransacked. The Briley brothers use a variety of weapons, including a baseball bat, knives, and a pair of scissors. Police spot Gardner downstairs and Paige upstairs in her bedroom. They put butcher knives all the way down through the floor. The final murders take place at this home behind me in the 2300 block of Barton Avenue. The Briley brothers walk up to longtime neighbor Harvey Wilkerson, his pregnant wife, and their five-year-old son. And this would be the last time anyone would see them alive. Known for scaring people, the Briley brothers and Duncan Meekins bully Harvey Wilkerson to letting them inside his home. The men overpower the family and shoots Wilkerson to death. They also raped Wilkerson's wife before killing her. They even killed a five-year-old boy. Spending months working to build a case and gather evidence, police come close to catching the Briley brothers on this very night. We were st staking out somewhere far back, heard the shots, didn't know where they were coming from. Um, saw the van they were driving about 15, 20 minutes later, chased them, they got away, and uh, the next day uh, the call came in that... Um, uh, the apartment door was open, and we went in there, and the place was just full of blood. Soon after this terrible crime, the Briley brothers' killing spree comes to an end. During a stakeout one night, a number of officers, including C.T. Woody, arrest Linwood Briley and his brothers. Police haul all of them away in handcuffs. While in custody, Duncan Meekins decides to cooperate with police in exchange for life in prison. If it wasn't for Duncan Me Meekins, uh, actually testifying with all the physical evidence and things that we had. He really put the icing on, on the cake. Duncan Meekins testifies identifying Linwood Briley as the mastermind for the assault and murder of Johnny Gallagher, leading to a conviction by the jury. Among other homicides, James Briley is found guilty for the murders of Harvey Wilkerson, his pregnant wife, and their five-year-old son. I know there were more than what they were convicted of. Linwood and James Briley are not shown any mercy, and both get the death penalty. Due to limited involvement with the crimes, Anthony Briley gets life in prison. 
But despite these convictions, this is James Briley in a jailhouse interview. I didn't commit any murders. I was not out robbing people. I was not this animal that the press had made me out to be. Most hardcore criminals never admit that they actually did it. It was always to been framed, or um, they don't have the evidence. You didn't. A big manhunt underway for six convicted murderers who broke out of a state prison in Mecklenburg County, Virginia, during the night. The inmates were all on death row. The six overpowered guards with homemade knives and drove out with a prison. The governor was extremely concerned for uh, the safety of any citizens that these escapees might come in contact with. He had been briefed on the, the uh, background of these individuals. He was aware that each one was awaiting uh, execution uh, for murder or mass murders. And he was extremely concerned uh, that we apprehend these individuals as quickly as possible. The two most dangerous escapees are the Briley brothers, James and Linwood. The Briley's ran a vicious Richmond area gang. Police suspected they had slaughtered anywhere from 11 to 20 people. On May 31st, 1984, Linwood and James Briley lead a six-minute escape from Mecklenburg Correctional Center using handmade knives and forcing the prison officers to call an ambulance to use as their getaway vehicle. They dressed up and they thought it was just pushing out somebody in the ambulance and in the truck and just drove right on way so smooth. A manhunt stretches over the Virginia and North Carolina border. 150 armed law enforcement officers from five different agencies post guard every 50 to 100 yards looking for the fugitives. Then a call comes in of these young children spotting an African-American man running through a wooded area near Route 707. I asked them to describe the individual that they saw. They described him and when I showed them the picture, they immediately went blam right to James Brown. Despite working around the clock for days, authorities call off six searches without finding the Briley brothers. These dangerous men on the loose puts the city of Richmond back on edge. Being one of the arresting officers in 1979, C.T. Woody fears retaliation. I was relieved the whole thing was over. A group of heavily armed FBI agents and police finally captured the two Briley brothers on June 19th while hiding out in this garage in Philadelphia. Authorities also arrest the brother's uncle for helping them. These are the comments of Lynn Wood and James Briley during their extradition back to Richmond, Virginia. Brother says you're innocent, are you? We are innocent. We have committed no crime and we never have committed none. I'm innocent of everything that was done in Virginia. Excuse me. And why do you have your face covered? Because I don't want to see you. Their appeals to escape the death penalty run out. On October 12, 1984, Linwood Briley is executed by the electric chair. The order of the circuit court of the city of Richmond uh, has been carried out. Uh, Linwood Briley was placed in the execution chamber at uh, 11 o'clock. He was sweating, he was shaking, you know, and they carried him up there. James Briley execution comes the following year in April, also by the electric chair. The execution of the Briley brothers causes racial tension. A lot of tension, a lot of name calling, you know, um, some are against the uh, death penalty. Some have said, you know, using racial slurs. Anthony Briley is still serving a life sentence at the Powhatan Correctional Center and has been denied parole by the state board. He also declined our request to speak with him. I've never seen anybody mean other than the Briley's. In Richmond, Josh Landon, 8 News. Yo, yo, we back with it. It's your boy, Papa Lot Mob Ties. We had it back to VA with it. Richmond, all my niggas from VA get in the comment box, all my niggas from Richmond, y'all niggas let it be known. Now, we about to cover um, three, a set of three brothers, um, Anthony, James, and Linwood, but they're probably better known in the Richmond community, or probably better feared in the Richmond community by the name of the Briley Brothers. Now, them, along with a friend named Duncan Meekins, 
that ended up being the one that testified against them. But uh, really, in this case, and the shit that they was doing, it ain't matter. They ain't really need nobody to testify against them. I don't think they was gonna catch these niggas for real, for real. Um, a little bit about them. Like I said, they were from Richmond. They were from, uh, I want to say, a two-parent home, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they said that their father was the only man or the only person that they feared as far as the Brawley brothers. But even his ass, when he went to sleep, they say he deadlocked his room door from the inside because uh, he knew... He probably had it in his mind. He didn't know what them niggas was capable of. Um, the first instance that got them in trouble was one of the brothers shot a neighbor from across the backyard um, while she was hanging up clothes. They thought she had a heart attack until the family went to the viewing at the funeral and noticed a small hole and asked the, the funeral director that let the funeral director know that they wanted the body re-examined. So it's like he almost got away with it. And when police got him and questioned him for it, he told them that he heard she had heart problems. So she was probably going to die soon anyway. So these niggas was on some sick psycho shit. I was not even going to cover these niggas, to be honest. I'm going to keep it so solid with y'all. I was not even going to cover these niggas. But what made me cover them was two of the brothers was the first to ever escape from a death row penitentiary. It's your boy, Papalot. Mob, 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 ties. The three Briley brothers were responsible for a killing spree in Richmond, Virginia in 1979 that lasted seven months before their arrest. The brothers were born to a stable home with two parents in the Highland Park neighborhood in Richmond, Virginia. With their younger brother Anthony, Linwood and James were regarded by older neighbors as people who would help neighbors repair cars or mow lawns. The three boys collected exotic pets such as tarantulas, piranhas, and boa constrictors. It is also alleged that all three brothers engaged in zoosadism. Their father, James Briley, Sr., was unnerved enough by their behavior that he kept his bedroom door padlocked from the inside overnight. James Sr. was the only person the brothers feared. In 1971, the first killing was committed by Linwood, then 16. While alone at home one day, he took aim with a rifle from his bedroom window and fatally shot Orlean Christian, an elderly neighbor across the alley, as she was hanging out summer laundry on a clothesline. The crime almost went undetected, but her relatives noticed a small bloody mark under her armpit at the viewing and asked the funeral director to re-examine the body. Upon a second examination, the director found a small caliber bullet wound under her armpit. Police were contacted and sought out to find the source of the gunshot. Standing in Christian's backyard, a detective used a sheet of plywood to represent her body, with a hole cut out to represent the bullet wound. He determined that the bullet came from the Briley home across the alley. There, the murder weapon was found and Linwood admitted to the crime with indifference. I heard she had heart problems, she would have died soon anyway. Linwood was sent to reform school to serve a one-year sentence for the killing. James or followed in his path at the same age, having been sentenced to time in juvenile hall for firing upon a police officer during a pursuit. In 1979, the three Briley brothers and an accomplice, Duncan Meekins, began the seven-month series of random killings that terrified the city and surrounding region. Their first attack occurred on March 12, 1979, when Linwood knocked on the door of Henrico County couple William and Virginia Butcher. Claiming that he had car trouble and needed to use their telephone, Linwood eventually forced his way into their home. He held the couple at gunpoint and waved Anthony inside. The two Briley's tied up the couple and robbed the house. 
dousing each room with kerosene after picking it clean of valuables. As they left, a lit match was tossed on the fuel. The two hurriedly packed their stolen loot, a television, CB radio, and jewelry, into their trunk and drove out of the area. William Butcher managed to free himself and his wife from their restraints and escape just before the house became engulfed in flames. They would be the sole survivors of the rampage. On March 21, Michael McDuffie, a vending machine serviceman, was assaulted, murdered, and robbed in his suburban home by the Brileys. Two weeks later, on April 9, the brothers followed 76-year-old Mary Gowan across town from her babysitting job. They followed her into her house to rape and murder her. They escaped from the residence with many of her valuables. The gang saw 17-year-old Christopher Phillips hanging around Linwood's parked car on July 4. Suspecting that he might have been trying to steal the vehicle, the gang surrounded him and dragged him into a nearby backyard. There, the three brothers wrestled him to the ground. When Phillips screamed for help, Linwood killed him by dropping a cinder block onto his skull. On September 14, disc jockey John Johnny G. Gallagher was performing with his band at a South Richmond nightclub. Stepping outside between sets for a break, he inadvertently came right into the hands of the Brileys. Having been looking around town for a victim all night without success, they decided to lie in wait for whomever might happen to step outside. Gallagher was assaulted by Linwood and put into the trunk of his own Lincoln Continental. He was then driven out to Mayo Island in the middle of the James River, where the remnants of an abandoned paper mill stood. There, he was removed from the trunk of his car and shot dead at point-blank range in the head. His body was then dumped into the river. The remains were found two days later. When arrested months later, Linwood was still wearing a ring stolen from Galar's hand. On September 30th, 62-year-old private nurse Mary Wilfong was followed home to her Richmond apartment. The brothers surrounded her just outside the door and Linwood beat her to death with a baseball bat. The brothers then entered her apartment and robbed it of valuables. Five days later, on October 5th, just two blocks from the Briley home on 4th Avenue, 79-year-old Blanche Page and her 59-year-old boarder Charles Garner were both murdered by the brothers. Page was bludgeoned to death while Garner was fatally assaulted with a variety of weapons, which included a baseball bat, five knives, a pair of scissors, and a fork. The scissors and fork were left embedded in Garner's back. The victims of the final murders were the family of Harvey Wilkerson, a longtime friend of the brothers. On the morning of October 19, despite having promised to judge earlier that day that he would stay out of trouble while out on parole, James led his brothers on the prowl at night for yet another victim. Upon seeing the brothers down the street, Wilkerson, who lived with his 23-year-old wife Judy Barton and her 5-year-old son Harvey, instinctively closed and locked his door. This action was noticed by the brothers, who then walked over to Wilkerson's front door. Terrified by their response if he refused them entry, Wilkerson allowed them in. Both adults in the home were overpowered, bound and gagged with duct tape. Linwood then assaulted Judy Barton in the kitchen, where she was raped within hearing distance of the others. Meekins continued the sexual assault, after which Linwood dragged Barton back into the living room, briefly rummaged in the premises for valuables, and then left the house. The three remaining gang members covered their victims with sheets. James told Meekins, you've got to get one, upon which Meekins took a pistol and fatally shot Wilkerson in the head. James then shot Barton to death. Police happened to be in the general vicinity of the neighborhood, and later saw the gang members running down the street at high speed. They did not know where the shots had been fired. The bodies were not discovered until three days following the crime, but the brothers were all arrested soon afterwards. Linwood and James Briley were the ringleaders in a six-inmate escape from Virginia's death row at Mecklenburg Correctional Center on May 31, 1984. During the early moments of the escape, in which a coordinated effort resulted in inmates taking over the death row unit, 
both Brileys expressed strong interest in killing the captured guards by dousing them with rubbing alcohol and tossing a lit match. Willie Loy Turner, another death row inmate, stepped in the way of James and forbade him to do so. Meanwhile, cop killer Will Budley Evans prevented Linwood from raping a female nurse. The group's initial plan was to escape into Canada. Two inmates, Lem Tuggle and Willie Jones, almost succeeded, making it as far as Vermont before capture at gunpoint by police. The group was held at Marble Valley Correctional Facility in Rutland, pending their extradition back to Virginia. Splitting off from their two remaining co-escapers at Philadelphia, the Brileys went to live near their uncle in the north of the city. They were captured on June 19 by a heavily armed group of FBI agents and police, who had determined their location by placing wiretaps on their uncle's phone line. Following their return to Richmond, few sought to plead for the Brileys' lives to be spared. In short order, the remaining appeals ran out for both brothers. They were executed in the electric chair at the Virginia State Penitentiary in Richmond, Linwood on October 12, 1984 and James April 18, 1985, Linwood was survived by one son, Norman Lacroix Nampi, who later served time in prison for bank robbery and died in 2015. James is survived by three daughters, who live in Richmond. The brothers are buried at the Council Cemetery in Bethel, North Carolina. Their younger brother Anthony remains incarcerated in Virginia's corrections system and comes up for parole consideration every few years. To date, all his applications for parole have been denied by the State Parole Board. For more information, please follow the link below the video.